used to be is now guns. Would that be much like an F-5 that we have here today? That, that is much like the F-5, yeah. As and a matter of fact, they have the same wing. The F-5 and the N-156. Right. And the, okay, well, let's take a look at an F-5. This aircraft to our right that you're looking at is a Northrop F-5 Freedom Fighter. I believe it was built right here in Northrop. And this particular one was sold to the King of Norway, or the Norwegian Air Force. And you can see the Norwegian markings on the side of the fuselage. Jerry, tell us a little bit about the F-5. Well, the F-5 is basically a converted T-38. You can see this is where the instructor used to sit. It's now the fighter's cockpit. And where the student used to sit, we put in uh, two 20-millimeter cannons. So it, it's basically the same outside as a T-38, the exception of the single canopy. For those of you that were here for our holiday parade back in December, I got the unique opportunity to taxi this aircraft down Hawthorne Boulevard. Wow. The kids were pretty impressed. And it's, it's a pretty impressive airplane. We had it in front of the police station uh, for a brief time, and the kids were able to sit in it, and they loved it. And this airplane is supersonic as well. That's right. It was about 1.4 Mach number. Okay. And for larger airplanes, what kind of missions would a plane like this fly? Well, primarily attack missions where they would uh, drop bombs, but it's also a fighter. It could engage in aerial combat. And uh, as a matter of fact, a version of this airplane is used by the, uh, uh, the, Na the Navy Top Gun Squadron and the Air Force Aggressive Squadron. They use it as a, uh, a simulated uh, enemy aircraft, and they fight against this. And many times this wins. And this was built right here in Hawthorne? That's built right here in Hawthorne. And you were part of this. You were on the project team that engineered this aircraft. That's right. Very interesting. Very you, thrilling. You've seen a lot of things in the last many, many yeah. years. Behind us is the YF-23. And that's probably the biggest, most powerful of all of them. Yes, this is one step beyond the YF-17. The YF-17 was uh, uh, built for the Air Force. It was then adopted by the Navy, called the Hornet and the Hornet served in the Gulf War. We're now building what we call the Super Hornet, which is a, a larger and faster version. But this airplane, compared to the YF-17, is like a 50,000-pound airplane instead of a 40,000-pound airplane. And it's a very stealthy airplane. Uh, and the significant thing about it is it, it can actually fly supersonic on uh, what we would call overdrive power. Uh, it uh, is what they call super cruise, supersonic cruise. And that means no afterburners no, to maintain supersonic speed. But it doesn't need it to fly supersonically. And that, again, is about 1,500 miles an hour ground speed. And again, you were part of the team that designed this. Yes, uh, I was very active in the design of the airplane. What would you call the tail section on this aircraft? Well, we call it a flying tail. Uh, the entire surface moves and it, it contributes both to up and down control and also it helps the airplane to roll. It's a, a very different looking design. Yeah. Uh, it, it's designed primarily for stealth. And this is also a twin jet powered aircraft? Twin jet airplane, yeah. Uh, and this has a pilot and co-pilot? Just one pilot. Just one pilot again. And a very sophisticated uh, computer control system. We're really pretty lucky to have as many Northrop aircraft as this all in one place for the public to see. That's right. And again, this is happening Northrop Field. at North, Jack Northrop Field, Hawthorne Municipal Airport. Right. We're not quite finished yet. We have something special here today. We're going to go see the F-20. This is an F-20 Tiger Shark jet-powered aircraft. It's a fighter plane that was originally designed to be sold to foreign countries. Um, Jerry's not sure what to say about it, but he's told me a lot about it. This is one of only three remaining aircraft, which is on loan here from the California um, Science Center at Exposition Park. It used to be the Science and Industry Museum. This plane was um, researched and developed by Northrop Corporation at a cost of about $2 billion. That's right. Northrop and money. All Northrop money. No taxpayer money. And you were part of the project engineer team on this as well. Right. Now, you had said earlier to me that you thought this airplane was the, this one flies at about 1.9 Mach? 1.9, yeah. So this is uh, sufficiently faster than some of the faster aircraft we saw earlier. It is. And it's a very maneuverable airplane and, and uh, 
Chuck Yeager was very instrumental in the design of this airplane. He was hired by Northrop as a consultant. So this airplane also has Chuck Yeager's fingerprints all over it. Has Chuck Yeager's fingerprints all over it. This aircraft was a, a single jet powered engine. Single engine. And it had the same power as more than two engines, yeah, in the F-5. So the F-5 has roughly 8,000 pounds of thrust with two engines? Yes. And, and this has roughly 12,000 pounds of thrust 12, yeah. with one engine? One engine. So this is, was quite an aircraft. It's quite an aircraft. Uh, uh, Chuck Yeager said it was the best fighter in the world as far as he was concerned. And yet, because of, as a matter of politics, it just never went anywhere as far as being produced and sold. It, it was a matter of politics. The, uh, the politics were in favor of some other airplane. So this never got produced. Well, this is a really unique opportunity to have all these Northrop planes in one place. This, the, what's sitting here today is a lot of history of how various wars and battles were fought around the world. And like I said earlier, this particular airplane will only be here while they do seismic retrofits to the museum in Los Angeles. So we're very fortunate to have this here today. And matter of fact, speaking of fingerprints, I think every airplane here has your fingerprints all over it as well. I think so. <laughs> the one that's behind us that says U.S. Navy Blue Angels, what is that one? That's an airplane that was built by uh, Douglas and El Segundo, and it served on the carriers for many years. It was called the Bantam, and uh, it was a good little fighter. But uh, <clears throat> it's subsonic. <clears throat> it only flies about maybe 500 miles an hour. Uh, but it served a lot in the Navy. Well, maybe we can walk over and take a closer look at it. So this is one of the only airplanes here that you don't have your fingerprints on. Right, this was designed and built by the Douglas Aircraft Company in, in El Segundo. Uh, became a very popular Navy airplane in the, uh, the mid-50s, but eventually it got outdated. It's only about a 500 mile an hour airplane but it, it did serve well in the Navy. We were told earlier today that this airplane was never actually flown by the Blue Angels, that this was painted, this scheme, for a calendar shot some years back at this museum. So this airplane was originally a different color, and I understand the museum's going to restore it with its original markings. You know, they call this airplane the Bantam, because it is a very small airplane. It's probably the smallest airplane that could be designed to, to serve on a carrier as a fighter. Now, would this airplane have to land with a hook? Yes, it has, a, it has an arresting hook on the back, and uh, it's launched from the carrier by uh, a catapult that uh, fastens on the underside of the fuselage. Uh, the F-18, in contrast, uh, has a dual nose gear, and the, the catapult hook actually grabs onto the nose gear and throws the airplane off the end of the carrier. And hopefully it keeps flying from there. <laughs> it, it does. The pilot goes, believe it or not, hands off during the during the launch. Really? Right. Very interesting. Yeah. 